funding model proposal presentation by Tommy, which would need some of our attention as well. So calling the meeting to order. First order of business is the secretary's report. Um, minutes of the April 9th meeting. And what do we do, Michael? Do I make a, a motion to accept and then we discuss? Um, I wasn't going to try. <laughs> You're right. I thought we were just yes. going to go through. <laughs> I move the accept the minutes. Exactly. Are there any? Okay. All right. Is there any discussion? All right. All in favor of accepting the minutes as proposed? Okay. Okay. I'll send him Peggy abstain. No, we don't. <laughs> <laughs> what you find is the still... Oh, wait. Yeah, I got it. Yeah, but the May. Wait, you're there. Yeah, Where? May packet. It says November 2023. Just... <laughs> oh, there it is. Okay. Yeah, there it is. Make sure it's there. All right. Okay. <laughs> Technology was challenging. Yeah. Um, are there any adjustments to the agenda? It's a full one already, but if there's anything else that people want to talk about or move it. Um, Steve August will be late today. He's got his county commissioner meeting and they have an executive session as well. So just when he comes in, we'll see if we timing wise, we still want to take up the um, the uh, corporator and board self-assessment. But we'll, we'll see if we can do that. But we have other things. Uh, okay. Comments, just a few of mainly kudos. Kudos to Samantha and everybody else who worked oh, yeah. on the spelling bee. It was great fun. Bigger and better compared to last year. So so much, so much the yeah. better. Wants to bring my room in. Oh, you should. Yeah. Uh, I also want to say uh, appreciation as well for the people who organized or did the volunteer appreciation event to team. And last month, that one was nicely, nicely done. And um, yeah, those are the the things. I also, I'm a personal fan of the poetry walk, so I'm always glad to see it every every April. So mm -hmm. I know Hannah and others have worked on that, so that's great. I appreciate it. I think it's it's a nice way to to mark the coming of spring. That being said, we will we'll do what we've done before on the reports, and that we'll just we won't uh, ask for any briefings or comments by the committee members. We'll just leave it open for questions. If things if people have read them, they have any issues they want to raise. So I have a few questions. By me, for the committee report. Well, we haven't done. We have oh, the yeah, library. Yeah, okay. Yeah, we have the librarians report yeah. first. All right. Okay. Ready? Yes. All right. Uh, just a, a couple things. Um, and then I mean, I'm going to give a, an update, uh, an EMC update is my report. Right. Um, so uh, I wanted to thank Samantha for and everyone that attended the Spelling Bee. It was a great success, a lot of fun. So thank you very much. Um, so yeah, I wanted to just give kudos to Samantha and I'm going to give an update um about what's going on with emc i know for those of you who read the building and technology report um the report was done right after the meeting so that was the information we had at the time and of course we did not receive the information um, that we expected from emc by the 26th however i do have an update for that that i'd like to give you today so um we did receive last friday the final project numbers, um, as well as an energy conservation measures calculations report, which has pages and pages of calculations for energy savings for lighting, solar, um, um, graphs and charts. I haven't even fully looked at it, um, but it's, it's um, quite comprehensive. Um, and then this past Monday, we received all the project submittals, which include all the equipment and products that are to be used um, for the project, as well as piping and wiring diagrams. So basically now we have all of the project documents. Um, and the only thing we do not have is the actual contract. 
So the Building and Technology Committee has just been given these documents and are beginning to review them, uh, but they have not yet met as a whole committee. And um, so the next steps will be the, for the committee to meet and um, then um, have their questions answered by EMC, either in a meeting or by back and forth emails, and then to have a, a recommendation to the board as early as possible. Um, and then EMC is certainly prepared to attend a board meeting um, and Karen Robbins will be there as well, whether that's a special board meeting or a regular board meeting, however the board would like to do that um, to discuss the project and answer questions. So um, it is coming together. Um, it's just, it took a little bit longer, but basically we have everything except the contract itself. So the, the next step is for the Building and Technology Committee to review um, the documents. Did you get a number? We do have a number. Uh, the number is slightly higher due to the timing and also there are a few more pieces added onto it. So, and again, that's something the Building and Technology Committee will be reviewing because um, they may not recommend all of those extra pieces. So that number is about 150,000, I mean, excuse me, 1.5 million up from the 1.2. But again, that includes some additional pieces that were not in the original project. Um, but that does not include the energy efficiency monies. Um, it's about it's a tune of about a, almost one hundred and fifty thousand dollars, and that is um, I thought that would be automatically subtracted from the total project amount, and that is not. So um, that is additional monies we could we would shave off that total or put towards the capital campaign um, amount. So it is one. It is about one point five million. Um, mm -hmm. But again, there are some additional pieces. Uh, so again, the building committee will be looking at that first and then making a recommendation um, to the board. Okay. Um, so that is my EMC update. Okay. Um, and this may be a subject that takes more, um, requires more further discussion. But I, it seems to me from reading about from the Building Technology Committee report, but also from your report, Leslie, that we're moving pretty fast about the library becoming a warming center or warming shelter. And well, frankly, I didn't think we were quite this far along. I saw there was even a uh, a training or a seminar this week by, by Philip Davis. So the so, so the we got clarification that we first of all we are. A warming shelter is an overnight. We, we got clarification what the difference is between a warming center and a warming shelter. Right. A warming center is any place that any, that someone can come and get warm. There has to be, I think, according to emergency management, there has to be two people in the building and it's any time during normal operating hours. You don't have to be out. So by default, we are a warming center. So we wanted to use that language in our case statement so by default, we are one, whether we do anything or not. We can call ourselves a warming center this very minute and do nothing. So we are a place where people can come warm, get warm during our operating hours. Anybody can come into the building. and We have two or more people in the building. So we, we are, by definition, a warming center. If we have power. If we have power. Right, and that's included as well in talking about a generator. Right, um, but which we so that's also the building and technology committee. So the other piece in meeting with Phil Davis is to determine the whole point in meeting with him was initially was to determine was an exercise so the building and technology committee could determine it what types of generator they might be looking at for what types of scenarios it kind of turned into something different than even what I expected. So they were they were using his expertise to help determine in what emergency situations we would want to look at to determine what type of generator we would want. So they could make a recommendation to the board if, the, if we wanted to consider including a generator in with the capital campaign project. I guess my question, I have a more fundamental question, at least in principle, is the board uh, does the board concur or think that pursuing this additional role for the library is good? 
we don't have to. I mean, one of the one of the reports said that the you know, in some ways that the Y would be a better location for um, for being a warming center. Certainly, as a warming shelter if it came to that. So I just thought my impression, correct me if I'm wrong, was that the board as a whole had not discussed this move towards increasing mm -hmm. the libraries to adding this additional role or responsibility for the library. Well, is it really, is it really, are we really taking on anything? I mean, it's just without doing anything by default, we are a warming center, right? I mean, well, we yeah. are, we're currently a warming center. Well, well we, we have power. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, we have. I have a concern because um, I don't know what is generating my cost, but it costs quite a lot. Mm -hmm. And I guess my concern was um, the staff is still waiting for cooling. And I know it's part of the whole day, I, you know, all of that. But that's how I responded when I read that. I thought, oh, we might spend money on generators. Can we put in portable air conditioners or something for staff? So I had some concerns about the funding piece. Um, it, that. It's that a distinction that we're sort of listed as officially as a warming center, or is it just that? Well, I think I was, I don't know, maybe Leslie knows. It seems that we would be, that, we would be, and so we would be expected to be a warming center. He's the second and, Yeah, right. And, so we, we, we did not, we, in, in calling ourselves a warming center, that's just terminology. We, we do not necessarily, we didn't talk about being listed in the county as a warming center. We can just, we can see really the, the reason we, we even brought it up when he said that was because we originally had it on our case statement right. and the board, there was some discussion about that. But warming center literally just means, it doesn't mean that you have to have a generator. It just means you're, if if we don't if we don't have power and we're not and we can't be open, we're still being a warming center for when we're open. We're just not operational, so therefore we're not a water warming center when we're not operational. It doesn't mean we have to change a thing. But when you think of a, yeah, but when you think of a warming center, you mm -hmm. think about. I mean, I think about going there. I didn't have power. That's a warming shelter. That's no. that's the well, difference. Well, no, no, yeah. to stay open. No, no, it's during the business days. And maybe well, only for right. operation. But, yeah. That's the key. Term. But, but Phil problem. was telling us that's not that that's actually that's a misconception. That literally a warming center right. is gonna be whatever hours you're open. So we we sort of took that because we really want to use that language in our case statement because we. We are we are theoretic. We allow anyone to come in the building, and you know, during our op when we're operational. So you therefore, think, in fact, the being a warming center with, with and being advertised as such, or it comes known as that, will this create any additional burdens on staff or facilities? Because you may have people who are normally used the library, but now do you might you have a rush of people who come in, uh, above and beyond what you would normally have. And will that require more security, more monitoring? That's the kind of thing I'm getting at, Tommy. Is this you have a role? You also have to keep order, basically. Yeah, I mean, if we if we advertise as a warming center and be listed in Saginaw yeah. County's list of warming centers, mm -hmm. that's I think another thing that we should think okay. hard about before we do it. But just st staying open for business, I don't know. I don't know. I mean, it doesn't yeah, seem like we 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 would not agree. We would never agree to that without board support. But that's yeah. not what we're agreeing to. We were just right. Okay. Basically, it's just good community PR mm -hmm. and. Using that in the case statement, it's just saying we're here for you, which you do every day anyway. Right. It's mm -hmm. just a way to showcase to the community. Mm -hmm. That's probably a nice catchword for funders too. That's yeah. right. That, 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 that's why we want it right. We're, I, I we're doing absolutely already, nothing different. It's already, it's already doing happening. Yeah. Already yeah. When yeah. people yeah. in Georgetown don't have power or whatever, and they come here and they're like, oh, oh thank God you guys have a power, you know, so it's already happening. I just think it's a great community average. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah, it's, it's something we already do. Do you think to the point of getting listed? Like, I think that's, that, that's a whole other that's conversation. Yeah. That's a whole other but, Right. But if you're yeah. putting out your case statement and using that as you are building community and PR, I think that's a great statement. And people would be very appreciative of that. There's another, like, 
another thing that happens, I know, in, at least in Woolwich, Saginaw DMA will call the town and say, hey, can you stand up a warming center in your municipal building because it's going to be super cold? Mm -hmm. They might call you for the same reason. And that may be something that the tr trustees might have an opinion about whether or not that would be appropriate to do that. Because I know when that happens in Woolwich, we have to, you know, wrangle people to staff it and have to be prepared to. Right, it's not a municipal building. Right, yeah. Except it's not a municipal building. No, no. Right. Yeah. But here, I mean, obligation. but here we would always be open when the weather. When we can be yeah. open. Yeah. I mean, the the generator doesn't have to do, the generator conversation didn't start because of the count, it didn't start because of it. This was Karen Robbins' idea to get some more because there was an emer somebody new starting that had, a, a, you know, to help us understand more about emergency situations to inform the building and technology committee on what they needed to be looking for in the types of generators so they could that's how the whole conversation started it was really to get some because this is something conversation that um, we've had the building of technology about you know when we lose power for a couple of days and we've talked about it here should the library consider having a generator to right. power so that issue would come that issue really exists aside from warming 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 center I mean that's that's clearly part we'd like to like be able to pretty operating but first is the HVAC. I wasn't trying to be argumentative or anything, but I just thought we hadn't talked about it as a group. And it does does change potentially the profile of the library in some ways. If it gets more formal, then it will certainly change it. Mm -hmm. And just make sure that you know that we're all comfortable mm -hmm. at this stage in this very informal way that doesn't involve a lot of extra effort. But I just thought it should be it should be discussed among the group. What's our capacity limit for the whole building? I do not know what the whole should building. Have a capacity. Will we have a capacity limit per location? Per you know, the community mm -hmm. room with the yeah. policy and procedure mm -hmm. with the input from the. Yeah. I don't Fine. know what the whole building yeah. is. Okay. I was just going to add one other thing. One of the things that did come up board meeting was, was right now we don't have a generator when there isn't power and. So I asked Leslie to about that there actually are emergency procedures. And so on that, the, it, what it stated on it and whether that gets looked at again is that if, if there's no power after 15 minutes, it, it should close. And that that's what's in the, our current emergency packet, which is actually on our, I think it's on the board. You could put it on the board. Um, mm -hmm. uh, Michael? Um, I just want to say that you know, at some level, this is more of a municipal function. And it, it strikes me that once again, when we revisit asking for money, if we go this way, we should be looking for some provision in this balance. We can't take on every role that a public services provider we should be doing. One other question. Sure. Um, Gilbert resigned. Is there a reason that we're moving? Or? Um, I yeah, it's it's I, I really not a liberty to talk about mm -hmm. anything personnel related, just for personal reasons. Like I don't want to say it in a public meeting. Mm -hmm. okay. All right, let's move on to the consent agenda. There are motion to accept the consent agenda. Eileen, a second. Allison, okay. Then, committee reports. So, I'm going to, so feel free to you know, offer comments. Rick, you had something? Uh, yeah, just some uh, ideas came up. Um, one on Elizabeth's report where you talked about the Morris High School students. I, it just sort of, we, do we have any new mayors? It might be interesting to, if we do in the community to have a program on literature for new mayors who probably aren't exposed to. Yeah. Anyway, just a thought to, yep. to think about. And then I was going to put Carl on the spot because um, Anna talked about the uh, Spanish conservation group, and I know Carl has a German group. Oh. <laughs> 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 yeah, it's in Brunswick at uh, what people plus. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And um, and I then uh, it could be here. We could have the German speakers here in the library. Yeah. Um, 
Yeah. Nice critical, critical, critical mass. mass. Yeah. <laughs> sure. And the children's department, there was a comment about how the baby time is growing exponentially. Mm -hmm. And um, if you're on Facebook, and this goes to the read to the dog program, it always strikes me that the bath, um, main friends and neighbors, whatever, the, I think that's what it's called. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Periodically, you see people, and some of you reply to it, see people asking, what can they do with their little kids? Mm -hmm. And uh, of course, I'm not the only one, but other people chime in and they talk about the library. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I thought, well, you know, that website is a great place to propagandize what we're doing. We shouldn't just be relying on our Facebook page that people don't necessarily go to. That bad friends and neighbors here where you get all the good gossip and <laughs> oh, see sure. the disputes and everything else. I mean, that's where you learn about the massage parlor. Right? Yeah. And the arena. Yeah. Oh my god. It is it is the it is the place to go to in town. Anyway, I, yeah, I just yeah. uh and, and if you're interested in trying to get people to go to and the dog, the that's dog the thing to mention. Under under, yeah. Under, under, under use, yeah. Under device, you know. Anyway, yeah. just the thought, my comment. Mm -hmm. Okay, <laughs> Carl can start us. Okay. Well, that's it. Those are, those are comments about from the uh, from the reports. Uh, is there anything? Well, this I've got a couple of questions, but it'll come more well, for okay. Samantha, which is really important. Yeah, I have a question about the community room reservations. There were quite a few. And I, I was curious about um, who are the, you know, what, what kinds of organizations and are yeah, they that, from our area or municipal areas or? Yeah, and I, I wish Hannah kind of could, could tell you exactly who it is, but we have noticed a, a, much, an increase in demand from outside groups wanting to use that space. And, and I think that is going to be. Um, Something that we're going to have to deal with, like balancing library programs that mm -hmm. we offer with our, uh, but it when you runs, say outside, you mean outside, the outside, community? outside the library, oh, so outside community the library. groups using the space. Um, there is a huge demand, but it it runs the gamut. Um, from we we've actually had a couple of private birthday parties in there um, on Saturday oh. mornings. To almost every community group that you can think of that that wants to have a meeting, um, and it's a great thing because it brings in you know um, people to the library, but trying to balance you know what what we what we offer, and we don't lock it off for library usage. We try to put our stuff in far in advance so there is no conflict. Mm -hmm. um, but one piece of of good news is about Fiber Optic Alliance. Have a little bit of money left over and, and they are purchasing us two new autos, which is good news for this group, and also a new projector, um, really great projector. So we can use this space in a much better way for classrooms if, if we're doing technology training or anything like that. Mm -hmm. So we don't necessarily need the big community space. We've been using it because of, it's got the great AV, you know, what we can call it AV. Yeah. But that, uh, for me, using this space, that kind of doubles our potential. So there'll be less comfort for big groups. Mm -hmm. But like, for instance, last uh, two weeks ago, the, the Friends of uh, Statue, the Williams or Statue, has a friends group associated with it. Mm -hmm. They came in and had their annual um, report. Uh, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. um, yeah. Yeah. So, refresh my memory about the use of is the room available to people outside our service area? They yeah. Okay. Yes, because we, you can you can reserve it online using that same reservation system for all of the spaces. No, the community charge. room is an option. We charge. We charge for that. Do we charge. We room? charge for yeah. private functions. Yeah. Right? Oh, we, and if we they're using food. if they're using if they're using the kitchen space for food. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. If we don't. If it's a group that we don't charge, do we so they get added to well, Samantha's database and we yeah, solicit we from them eventually and that we capture that in the in the reservation the culture. culture. So right. but but yeah, we wouldn't charge a nonprofit, but typically 
they were able to like shove that, but we did capture the data. Mm -hmm. We're going to capture it better now with, with Cal, I think. So, yeah, yeah. Okay. good. Yeah, thank you. Okay. Are there any other questions or comments about the committee reports? Just one other comment is the increase in monthly statistics over the previous year. It's incredible. Mm -hmm. yeah, the, it's only in one area are we sort of down. Yeah, yeah, there's a lot of usage. Usage yourself. Yeah. 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 Something to remember for the capital campaign. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 So, so there too. Yeah. Okay. And one other, just, yeah. I'm just curious because it's referenced in a couple places the, the need for a teen librarian. I think it was Hannah that was mm -hmm. calling out for that. And I've seen it in the finance. So I don't. I know that's a, I guess on the wish list, but mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. I just know if there are any other comments that way. That was in the first draft of the budget. Right. Okay. Uh, it's yeah. been discussed. Yeah. Okay. yeah. I wondered whether there would be any, because uh, I saw that too, and I was thinking, um, I wonder if there would be any grant opportunities for that. That was one thing. And also whether there might be volunteer possibility. It's not the same as a librarian, but someone who might want to volunteer to work with teams. Because I know we had to delete it from the budget. Well, um, well we didn't we we didn't ever delete it. We never had we only well, right, right. We I didn't mean, it was on our it was on a draft. It was on but the draft. I mean the thing with grant too, I mean, we sure. might be able to look for one, but it's they're not sustaining yeah. like right. grants. So right. it doesn't give us then we give something and take it away if we can't sustain it. So I'm I'm always hesitant to to use a grant for a staff position that I can't sustain in a budget. Um the same with, with volunteers to you know, when we look for a teen librarian, you know, you know, the, someone with an MLS is trained with, to work with, you know, I mean, they have extra, you know, training and things that a volunteer may not. So there, are, there is a level of. No, for, I, I, I understand that. that so the right volunteer or someone who's worked with teens, maybe in a school setting. And is, I mean, if, you know, if a, I just, just yeah. the thought. I Elizabeth mean, does have, you know, see yeah. vol you, you know, look at the volunteer yeah, applications. Right. Oh, but again, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. they're a little different then because they don't have to show up and we right. need to make sure because teens generally don't often show up themselves. So it has to be. the thing with teens we found is you really need continuity. And I think that's what I think what Hannah was trying to get across was. You have to build relationships with teens and, and Don can tell you that, too, and you really need it, it takes time and it takes somebody that's around, especially after school to kind of, and we really don't have that, you know, we just don't have that person, that presence that's, um, you know, and so um, you know, it's just something to to think about. If you go back to the near full-time um, person's has an MLS degree and uh, teenagers are like cats, um, <laughs> no, seriously, you know, and lay out the milk and you just watch it and they'll come around, but they, you need the consistency to build trust and they see mm -hmm. different faces, they won't, they're like cats, they'll just hide and go away, but um, for the demand, what you're programming, you need another full time, so, so it's, it's impossible. Uh, be an outreach librarian and try to also do a team right. librarian. It's just too much. Yeah, and well, and the and the reason again that that she is sort of inherited that was because we morphed. Roberta had done that position, and then she became assistant director. These positions have have morphed, and everybody wears multiple hats. Yeah. And no, it's not ideal. Um, and it's um, but we've not we don't have the funding to have the staff and it's and we talk about it in in finance we talk you see it on our in the when we um um you know uh the budget you know yep. we show the things that we're not the able budget. to do right. and so um okay right something to keep in mind there's nothing more we can move on to the treasurer's report anthony Leslie, do you happen to have you know i didn't look up the endowments report so i i forgot to do that so we um, maybe just from Tuesday's uh, whatever the latest from the cash report is. All right, so looking at the cash report, the endowment as of 5 3 24 was eight million three hundred seventy one dollars. Three hundred seventy one thousand eight hundred sixty seven dollars. 
Uh, everything is really moving along as it should. I don't think there's anything nominal to mention. Leslie, you agree? I don't think there's anything that came up in finance that nope. uh, is nominal. Um, again, this the cash report that we call it, the balances, if you will, those are all as of May 6th or as the endowment is May 3rd. Uh, the P&L report is as of March. You remember, so we are a couple of months behind. Uh, one thing to notice is we did we did take a draw in April from the endowment, which is not reflected on the March P and L. So if you happen to look at that and say, "Oh, well, it says two hundred thousand," we have taken three hundred thousand uh, from the endowment, and the next disbursement will probably be pretty soon, right, Leslie? Uh, it was today actually. Oh, in fact, just today. So. Mm -hmm. We have drawn, uh, I assume you took the remainder. I did. So we've drawn yeah, the last 101,000, yes. Yep, so we've taken everything. I just add to that is that just to bring people's attention to the Finance Committee minutes about the uh, coming close to running out of cash this year. And yeah, Leslie, do you want to speak about that? Because that's something that you had brought up. Do you want to talk about that, Leslie? I can, yeah. So what it means is we're just going to be close this year, it doesn't mean we we don't we have options, so we're not gonna you know. But what it does mean is that we have to. I'll be I will be paying very close attention and the finance committee to that end of the year. Uh, I think we have now four more pay periods left, and I just took the last draw that we can draw the five percent. Um, and so looking at our cash flow that we do, you know, we're, it's going to be tight. Um, so we'll, we may have to make a decision on what we want to do just to get us to July 1st. And we just won't know until the, till it gets close, um, how we want to handle that. Um, so we'll talk in finance, um, as it gets closer and, and again, just the cash flow issue. Each payroll is approximately how much? About 25,000 with taxes. Yeah. And it's really just something for us to be aware of in finance. Um, obviously, they're, we're not insolvent. So, you know, it just there just may be a conversation about what we might have to do to move something around temporarily. Mm -hmm. um, you know, there is no fear of nobody getting paid, of people not getting paid. Right. That's not a thing. As you can see, there is plenty of money. It's just something to keep in mind that we may have to, you know, move something temporarily and just something to keep in mind. Right. So, how we're going to do it for accounting purposes. Mm -hmm. So, you know, and that's really, but it's not like, we don't have money to yeah. borrow, to not to borrow, but to move temporarily. That's not the case, but it's just something we have to be aware of. No questions. I think I'll ask that. Okay. Move on to developments. I did not compare reports, so I will give the report. <laughs> um, so the annual fund as of right now is $129,403.50. Um, we still have about 1,300 in open pledges. I'm not convinced all of that will get paid. It'll be a little less. Um, so that puts us, what, 5,000, know, like $5,100 for my goal. Um, I have a huge mailing that's in my office. I'm taking it to the post office tomorrow of like 800 people. So, you know, still, even if just the live bonds gave what they gave last year, that's like $25,000 that could come in from that. So I think we'll be fine. Um, spelling B, I have some numbers, not total numbers, because the raffle is still open for two weeks downstairs. Buy your raffle tickets if you haven't. Um, so the total so far is a little over $7,100. For, which is more than we did last year, just by a couple hundred dollars. Um, and like I said, the raffle is still open for two weeks. So um, I kind of broke it down. I don't know how many people came exactly because the way the ticket sales, some were 25, 30, but whatever. My count <laughs> in the room that night, knowing we had 85 chairs out, where there were 82 people in those chairs. So, and then we had 43 people on the stage. The capacity in that room is 125. So we were at 125, mm -hmm. wow. which is pretty awesome. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, the overall, so far the raffles raised over 1,300. 
Um, we had full 12 teams and all the team teen teams were sponsored this year. So that means we made yeah. all twelve hundred dollars. So thanks to the friends for sponsoring two of them and for um, Michael Placid and Maggie Weber for sponsoring one of them. Um, the team that they sponsored won. <laughs> the Lang Gang. The Lang Gang. No idea why. <laughs> But uh, it was a set of junior, oh, wow. one of Jonathan groups. It had Gaffney and Anders. Yeah. Well, um, is that their name? They were great. They're um, all AP language mm -hmm. students. And they oh, there you so go. That's AP Lang. There you go. Oh, yeah. Sorry, AP Lang. AP Lang. They are AP literature students. Language oh, language students. oh, I see. That AP makes AP sense. Lang. They got oh. a nearly perfect score. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> they were, they literally, I think. And we came down to a tiebreaker. We had to go through a three tiebreaker. Is that all you had? Did you That's have more? All we had was three tiebreaker words, which is why the third place teams had to do rock, paper, scissors. <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, <laughs> so, yeah, so the Hollywood All Stars, which are our PFL movie group, won second place. And then the Woolwich group with Allison and Tommy yeah. and the Lip Perks took in third. Um, it was a really great game. We had a lot of fun. Food was great. Um, I did spend more on it than I would like because of the catering. So um, I did get two donations to help cover that. But it's a fine line to walk. Do you want to have good food or not? Yeah. The food is the food is amazing. Yeah. Yes, that's yeah. my experience. Yeah. Two, yeah. two lines, yeah. two spots for food. Yeah, yeah. yeah. There's some more things. desserts. Yes, I know. I've heard this from everybody. Okay. I want to die. It. So I'm like, what are you talking about? Dessert? Oh my god, those were amazing. Well, that's good. So, 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 um, <laughs> yeah, and then we I gave the winning I team a tote bag that I designed on Canva and had printed, but it said like um, 2024 Spelling Bee Champions. Oh, cool. It had a little bee on it. It was very cute. Like um, and then the we also had the best team, which was done by costume and crowd favorite, and that crowd favorite was the ABCD. Oh, and you gave those Don't glasses. know who they are, but last year they were there. Too. Yeah, yeah, they yeah. got bee glasses and bee antennas, and they wore them for the game, which is what I was hoping they would do. Um, they were one of our teachers. One Morris and Warren. Oh, okay. I'll have to, I'm going to reach out to everybody and, and thank them all. But it was wonderful. Megan and Brian were great. Um, the whole thing, I think, was a good success. Yeah. Um, I but, saw the Stantons on Saturday. They were yeah. full of yeah. vim and vigor. Yeah, from it, yeah, yeah, I saw a bunch of folks on Saturday. They really picked up. They really built momentum in the course of yeah. the evening. Yeah. They started off yeah. slowly and then it really, people really got into it. So. Yeah. 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 Um, but no yeah. trash. Least not too bad. I um, do John Don apologized <laughs> for ruining the game by stalling the oh, board. So, so, so funny. So funny. And he also said, I want to be a judge in it. So <laughs> he loved it. Um, um, otherwise, in development, we are, like I said, the annual appeal mailing for the spring has gone out. And part of that is a patron postcard mailing to try to capture new patrons with donors. Um, we are still working on finalizing the spring business appeal mailing. That's been slow. Um, there have been some businesses not giving, but Eileen's been great helping follow up. Peggy did some follow up. I'm going to do some follow up tomorrow um, and bring that to a close. And you're, then, you're launching a new business to be from Well, we're going to. So then the final thing for the development is we have to approve the development plan. I, I only printed out five copies because it's obscenely long and you all have it Is digitally. It not, okay. Yeah. yeah um, but if anybody needs a copy, I have a copy. I have a paper copy. Um, but basically, yeah, we we worked hard over this over the last handful of months. Um, of course, all of this is before we approved the capital campaign, and now I think I'm a crazy lady for doing this. But, <laughs> so we'll just yeah. go into this year with the asterisk of we might not accomplish everything, but we're really going to try to. Um, hopefully, I'll have a development assistant soon, and that will help alleviate some of the stress of all of this. But um, uh, yeah, if, if everybody's had a chance to review it, I can answer any questions or... My question is on the business development. Yeah, so what I've done is um, the I've contacted a couple of folks who are going to review some ideas I have selected from other places that do business supporter um, packages. And we're going to talk about revamping ours to make it more appealing because I really think post-COVID, it's been hard. Um, Hannah and I brought it down to what it is now, and it's more achievable for her and I to manage all of the pieces. But... 
I'm not thinking it's a, it's not appealing, I think, to some of the businesses. So I think we just need to look at it anew, give it some fresh, you know, things that we can offer the businesses that might be a little bit more um, appealing to them. I'd like to start pushing some of our businesses to give higher and if they've been pretty stagnant over the years. So I think we need to boost what we do back. Um, so yeah, we'll hopefully start working. I just was thinking I should send out an email to them in the next couple of weeks. And we'll kind of, my plan is to have that kind of over the summer back and forth emails. And then by the fall, we'll roll out with them. And it's uh, Suki and it's Suki and Peggy and Lori, did you, was it you? We talked about it. Yeah, yeah. Lori, yep. I'm counting oh. her as a guess. Yeah, so just a couple of, you know, people who are involved and like Peggy, you know, does a lot of the chasing down for businesses and knows, you know, it's happy to talk. So I thought you all come from different experiences with it and, you know, we'll see what we can come up with. Great. Any other questions? No, I was just going to comment that this is always good when you do this on the target and you can look specifically mm -hmm. and you have the dates yeah. so mm -hmm. it's it's i think it's a good good form i mean you know good format and thank mm -hmm. you it's a lot of work mm -hmm. it's a lot of you know, work to get some specifics in here well, you have to really think so. and consider and these have to be achievable goals and i want to say things like we're going to get yeah. 10 new we're going to do because yeah. these are achievable numbers so yeah. that gives us something we can that's what's really good. yeah yeah um I think the friends piece is going to be the biggest chunk, but I did work directly with them on this yeah. piece. So they're all in agreement with it, but there's a lot there. Um, the friends have sort of kind of just been floating along and doing their thing, but the giving has been kind of stagnant. So we're going to try and reinvigorate and do some things there. Mm -hmm. Oh, you mentioned with the friends that I don't even understand if there isn't a president and Marshall the, stated at the last friend, and it's in, yeah, that the book is no book it's all tied together. I guess I'm not really sure how that, but yeah, because they run the bookstore and they, meaning the president of the friend, the right? manager of the bookstore, yeah, hat, right, right. But if we don't have a friend's president, we don't have a friend's group because they need a president. Mm -hmm. So without the president, then it sort of starts to fall apart. <laughs> So. There's some new faces coming forward, though. Oh, I'm not sure. Mark well, was kind of yeah, there's, I know one person has, I confirmed today that one person has reached out and will be attending the next friends meeting as a potential president mm -hmm. because Marsha is officially done in October, as is the treasurer, who has been the treasurer for 20 years. Yes. So, yeah. yeah, so there's a lot, I think, with them. That's going to be a lot of the work. I also saw the known your report about them not accounting for the, the yeah. money from the bookstore. Yeah, yeah, we had that discussion at the still. meeting and they didn't, because the bookstore money comes directly into our accounts, even though Leslie reports to them exactly what it is, they just don't include it in their total. So when they say they've raised 569,000 over 23 years, they're not including mm -hmm. Yeah. the enormous oh, amount wow. of wow. bookstore money yeah. that we talked about and they said we should probably start yeah, <laughs> yeah. I didn't yeah. realize until like yeah. the last was the, the, the special meeting. book reader meeting yeah. that, that that number wasn't didn't include the yeah, bookstore yeah because Marsha said oh we don't include the bookstore and I was like what yeah. that's yeah, so much because that's right. where we've seen a huge increase with the friends I mean right. they raised almost 40,000 right. alone at the bookstore this year so yeah yeah I yeah. think that's I think yeah so I think the friends are just in need of some reinvigorating well, and getting some you know I hope they start doing it when yes. it gives a better picture yes. of their, I would like to get a their impact the number. The work they're doing yeah, yeah. exactly I but, noticed they have online sales I that they have not started online sales, but um, Pat did suggest that they wanted to. So I reached out to the um, Curtis Memorial Library, Twice Told Tales, and I connected with the um, person who manages it there. And she was ready to come in this like that week and train all the volunteers. But Pat hasn't identified any volunteers who would actually mm -hmm. do that. Mm -hmm. But when we're ready, Twice Told Tales said they will come in and do a full oh. training and show us how to do it on eight oh. books and, Great. and you know, yeah. the pros, the cons, all of the little bits. We went back mm -hmm. and forth quite a bit. So, yeah. I think, buying online? Yeah, being able to, because they have some books that come through that, um, you know, they've got some volunteers who will identify like, oh, that's a quite a valuable book. You know, and so instead of selling it for under $5, which is what they do in the store, they could then put that online. 
But again, it's a whole other thing. You've got to manage the shipping and you have to have somebody who can do that online mm -hmm. sales. So it's going to be a big thing, but I, I'm going to keep fanning that flame because I think it's a great mm -hmm. next step. Well, okay. I subscribe to that. I mean, I, I buy books online through various and Aquarian book mm -hmm. dealers all the time. Yeah, great. So you want to help with it? I'll talk to I, I'd be interested in seeing how they do it at yeah. Curtis. That would be great. I can share some of the information, but I think it is. I think it's a. I think it's a good job for someone who would enjoy that and would help them raise some more money. So, so yeah. So that's the development plan. The schedule is a, there as it is. There's some things where I would like to change and move. So I've noted those in. So I put them where they currently exist, but you know, might shift things around again. The capital campaign may change okay. everything. And on the back is the stewardship plan. Moving ahead this year, the only change really is I would like to print letters over 250, just because 250 is the tax cutoff. Um, whereas you you know claim something as a write-off. So anybody who gives 250 and over will get a printed acknowledgement and then we'll continue with the emails for everybody else. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Say the least. Say the least. All right. If there are no other questions you want to. Town area school activities. Is there anything? We have to, to get the vote to say. We have to vote oh. this in. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. The board approves. We All right. Motion. Make a commitment. <laughs> I, I, is there a motion to I move approve. approval? Move approval. Is there a second? Peggy seconds. Tom thirds. All in favor of approving? All right. Okay. Guys. Plan is approved. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Town and area school activities. We can need to report on that. Do you want to do foliage? So, yeah, so our budget was, the, our budget was approved. Oh, yeah. oh, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. oh, yeah. oh, we haven't had a board meeting since then? <laughs> I guess not. Yeah. Go so, ahead. You, 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 you no, know, it was, um, <laughs> there was more discussion than there had been in the past. Actually, Mary Ellen fielded a whole bunch of questions um, oh. and did an excellent job. Um, Mike Fear did a, gave a nice speech in favor yes. of the library. Yeah. yeah. But it was the only it was the only contentious issue on the entire agenda. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Now there were a lot of people that spoke in favor of it, including my husband. <laughs> I think he was in favor. I think he was. And I think he was <laughs> more than a whole <laughs> Yeah, I think it's But anyway, yeah, so that was that was good. West Bath has their budget town meeting this Thursday, and on the warrant, uh, it's all up, thumbs up. So, like last year, I'm hoping to just see it sell story. Okay. Mm -hmm. The Georgetown has some budget meeting tomorrow. And it's not with Okay. So that's the budget committee that's yes. okay. Advisory committee. Okay. Yes. Right. Yeah. Okay. Okay. There's more discussion of that if there is any than at the town meeting. Oh yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. okay. okay. Yes. All right. Thank you. Old business capital campaign updates. Okay, I'm going to give that report for now, and then the hope is, you know, when we have a chair or co-chairs, that they will give the, uh, those reports. So, um, so after the last, what's happened since the last board meeting, um, we signed a contract. So we're starting just with a six-month contract with Osprey um, Strategy Group, which is, which is Rebecca. Um, so. Um, we're doing six months just to start, and then we can ex extend longer, obviously, um, as the board has approved working with Rebecca um, um, for the campaign. Um, so we be immediately began weekly just staff meetings to um, to start with Rebecca and Samantha and I just to start some of the logistics, uh, you know, planning just for the first meeting, some of the things like pledge forms and some of, of, of that kind of stuff that needs to happen. Um, you know, starting basically like looking at committee descriptions, just, you know, um, uh, that kind of things. Um, so we have the first capital campaign committee meeting with the members that we have, the four members that we have this Thursday, May 16th at noon. 
Um, we, to date, we have 160. I thought that was Friday at 10. Oh, what? no, that's development committee. Capital campaign committee is Thursday at 12. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Development committee is Friday at 10. That's a word. Yeah, and I, no, I just I think it said committee, and that's what I saw. I <laughs> that. Okay, okay, okay. Well, okay. That's just an hour. And um, yep. so we have to date received $167,149 received with an additional $556,000 in pledges. Um, and I will be advertising, I'm working on the job description right now and uh, Samantha and um, Rebecca had uh, put together uh, a, a nice draft for a part-time capital campaign and development assistant. So, um, and the, the position will be paid for from the capital campaign monies as will Rebecca's um, monthly um, stipend. So I'm trying to finalize that. Um, Hopefully uh, tomorrow we have places we're going to advertise and um, get a, a, a person, excuse me, person hired for a part-time position, um, primarily, uh, again, to help with the capital campaign and then also to um, alleviate some of Samantha's, you know, duties, um, you know, gift entry, things like that, anything, um, you know, taking minutes at the, at the, for all, you know, the capital campaign committee meetings, arranging meetings, helping with event planning, um, you know, all of those things that will, will alleviate uh, time and move the campaign forward. So um, anyway, so that that's the report I've got. So things are moving. So again, we're still, we'll be talking a lot about the first meeting, um, uh, you know, there's still the need for uh, chair, co-chairs, mm -hmm. We currently do not have. Now, uh, Leslie, I remember at um, Rebecca, I guess she yes, at, when she gave her before and said about um, staff needs, she mentioned you also because you will be spending more of your time. Um, on the capital campaign, right? So, so yeah, that's a good question. We're going to start with the part-time person only because I really think that that's going to, we're, we're going to start there. Some of the things I'm I'm looking at are kind of broader picture. So we're going to see what happens if we start with a, with the part-time helping Samantha and the taking over, um, you know, a lot of those ad administrative duties. Um, and maybe that person may have time to do a few admin, even administrative things that I do. So that mm -hmm. that's the hope, if possible. Um, the, the, and I'll have to, I'm, I'm thinking about it, but mine's gonna take a little bit longer to kind of develop um, the overall needs because a lot of the things are things I do are not things somebody else can do or a clerical or administrative person can do. So um, so the more important need, the, the immediate need is, is, a, is an administrative help for Samantha. For, for, for and for the capital campaign. So that's where we're going to start. Mm -hmm. Can you mention that person having anything to do with the annual time? Yes. Yes. Okay. Oh, yeah. yeah. So, so they're, they're, so they're they, the campaign. development task will be focused more around the annual fund gift entry yeah. and helping writing the letters sure. and all right. of that. Yeah. 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 The, the task that I don't need, you don't need. Right. You it's, don't need somebody like me to do it. Right. Especially yeah. on the say, because so her and I both have to add 40% of our time to the capital campaign. But so not going to add that to right. the work I already so did. Yeah. Yeah. Both of you, you yeah. And each of us will have to, about 40% of our time will go to the campaign. So, so yeah, so her, the, the job is going to be advertised as, you know, as capital campaign and development assistant. Mm -hmm. So it's helping, because you know, like during busy, you know, we're right after she ends an appeal, Samantha will spend a lot of time just entering gifts, which somebody else can do. So that's, those are the kinds of things, you know, there'll be a lot of more clerical things that that person. Meeting. Yeah. 
right. um, taking minutes at the develop, you know, the development committee meeting right, right. now, yeah. you know, somebody else sometimes does, but Samantha sometimes does as well. Just they'll be taking minutes at the capital campaign committee, you know, meetings. They'll be doing a lot of, you know, arranging and following up with emails and making sure the committee members and the chairs have the information they need and making sure all the campaign materials are up to date and and uh, you know a lot of those things so um yeah okay anything more any questions Michelle, about the capital campaign? let's move on to new business then the 24-25 revised budget so mm -hmm. To that first comment, um, and then I can echo it. Well, the reason for this budget update is primarily the discovery that we weren't really accounting for all of the expenses we were bearing for processing payroll. So now that we've engaged ADP to actually do our payroll processing, we can attach a more concrete figure to the cost of processing payroll. And so we wanted to modify the budget to reflect that. So, um, Leslie, you want to describe the particular changes? That yeah. You're proposing? So as a result, we decided to take a look. Um, when we do the budget, I, I don't have the March quarter of the uh, endowment value. So we decided to take a look at that. And when we did, we, you know, I have to project uh, in December, you know, what I think, you know, the the March value is going to be. And based on the market um, at the time, I projected, we projected a little low. So it was actually the value was higher than we projected. And so the finance committee um, decided that we should um, do a 12 quarter average based on the March, you use that March um, projection, I mean, use that, excuse me, not projection, use that March number, um, and then actually do that draw, which increased it to 411,000. So if you look at the budget and draft notes, you'll see that that new calculation um, did bring it up, look at the second page, from 404,239 to 411,823 when we recalculated with that March quarter. Mm -hmm. So um, the Finance Committee recommended using that quarters um, to put in the, the figure um, because we were going to need a little bit more for payroll um, because we um, didn't realize for some reason until recently um, the way QuickBooks works, they embed uh, they embed the payroll expenses. They automatically um, import them in to uh, QuickBooks. And we, it wasn't really clear that we hadn't budgeted amounts that we were being charged for, for direct deposit and things like that. When we did make that discovery, we realized, again, we hadn't budgeted for them. So we wanted to make sure in our budget that we reflected that. So the only other changes in the budget are minor. Um, basically, if you look at the second page of the budget notes, shows you what they are. So again, the, on the revenue side, we increased the endowment draw from 404 to 411. Um, and then on the expense side, we decreased the um, bookkeeper, we re decreased salary and wages to reflect um, the less time spent by the bookkeeper on payroll since um, uh, now that we are, we are outsourced, it takes very little time every other week to do payroll. Um, we added um, uh, a budget of $4,500, uh, a new line, payroll services line at the end of the salaries and benefits section. And we added um, $5,000 to the building and maintenance um, line, the top line under operating expenses. And we um, always go over that line. And so we, we decided to put an additional 5,000 there. Um, and again, the reason we go over it is because contract prices go up yearly. Um, and with an older building, we seem to tend to have more repairs on heating and things like that. Uh, and then the the contingency line is always the line that I use to balance the budget. So that changes. So it's always an odd amount every year. And that's, again, just to balance. There's no rhyme or reason to the exact amount other than I use it to balance. So that got adjusted a little bit. 
so that the revenue and expense balance. So that's the difference um, in this um, latest draft. So um, I have a question. Yeah. About insurance. Um, is this figure, the $17,000 figure, is that based on an actual policy that's in place or is it just a. I'm sorry, a, which line? I missed insurance. the insurance. Um, the insur the building insurance yeah. under credit card fees? Yes. Yes, those are based on our the policies that we have. Okay, and then okay. yeah, yeah, and then our, our broker always says add a few percent for the policy. I'm not sure if any of the um upcoming improvements are going to be if are going to affect the how much that policy will be costing. I think I actually checked that with our broker and he did not think that that was going to add add um to the insurance policy. I mean add, you know. Increase. I think we need a motion to approve this budget. The just the revised budget. The revised budget. Okay. Mm -hmm. is moved. Seconded by Leah. All in favor of the proposed revised budget? Say okay. okay. Yeah. Passed. Approved. Then, 